married. A long time. We got married when I was 17. 17. Because apparently in order to solve a murder, you must know every stupid fact about a person. Childhood sweetheart. Pointless clip. When you've been married for ten years, stuff accumulates. You could argue about anything. And he's so nice. That doesn't help. He tries to smooth things over, and that just makes it worse. We're both passive aggressive, so we never normally argue directly about anything. Oh my god, you can feel the writer's bullshit like seeping through every ounce of this game. Let's go for dinner. I got a job to contribute to my job. Doug knew someone and I got a job as a dinner lady at the primary school. D dinner lady? So it didn't matter if I could cook or not, just don't poison the kids. So you see, it's always been complicated between me and Simon. What? <laughs> that... It's never just been the two of us. There's always been pressure. I... What? Jobs. Not really. He would go to the pub. He had his drinking buddies there, but no one ever really came back to the house. Sometimes Eric, his boss, and his wife would come in for dinner. That would be us returning the favour. Diana's a really good cook. Into her trendy ingredients. And the last time Simon cooked something off. Master chef, he got the recipe of Cfax. Cfax. My Lloyd Grossman bit, commenting from the sidelines. That sounds really I cute. From the supermarket. Have you ever eaten honey? Is that really an achievement? Fennel. Nope. Worthless. Married? Morning sickness. Let's just look up sickness. Let's look up trapped. Okay. There's a girl and she's staring out of the window. She's sad. She's trapped. She's here. She's looking out the window because her mother won't let her out. Um. Won't let her out. <laughs> Sexual healing. Ah. Sexual healing. Nope. Sex. Yep. Bound to be a lot of those. Okay, let's do it. Really? You're going to ask me about my sex life? I mean, isn't that private? Nope. Private. Are you married? How is your sex life? So, our sex life is probably fairly average for a couple after ten years of marriage. God, keep dodging it. They're obviously not having very much sex. No! You're talking to the wrong person if you think I'm some kind of slut. If you think I'm the kind of person that would have had sex with all those guys. Does she have multiple personalities or something? Was the girl she saw across the way actually just her? Her reflection? Is that the bullshit we're supposed to be picking up from this? It's like a birthday. Yes, that's my birthday. 
not one of the big ones, but I guess you can see that. It was my birthday, like you said. We were going to have a meal at home. We had our meal. He gave me his present. I guess I didn't like the present. Present. There's a lot of clips in this. From when I woke up. Okay. I, uh, I woke up. Simon was already up and he made me a birthday breakfast of eggs benedict. Uh, we both had to go to work so we saved presents till later. Um, I got to work, had some birthday cake, children sang me happy birthday. Then She's the lunch lady. The birthday meal was a takeaway um, and Simon gave me his present, which I didn't mind. And after that, we talked about the baby. Turned into a big argument. Simon left. I was furious. I wanted to get as far away as I could and get some space to think. So I left. Mm. I honestly don't think her acting's that bad. Um, I don't. I don't hate her acting. I just don't like the writing. Let's look at miscarriage. I don't even hate the presentation. I just uh, someone else should have written it. I don't I don't think it I don't think it reads very well. Yeah. They got to pedophilia. I think it was flu or something. The neighbor called me, I had to use my key to let them in. We found them dead in their bed. And they'd been there for days. No one had noticed. Just awful. It was so soon after my miscarriage. The worst year of my life. I've been so happy to get married, and after that, it was just like, fuck. Let's go, fuck. I could do without your face appearing in the thing, though. I think that's stupid. Yeah. I was infertile. Infertile? I was. They told me I was infertile after the miscarriage because of complications. Complications. Infertile and complications. You'll learn more about this overall this this woman's history that none of us care about. Hannah had a miscarriage. This was late in the pregnancy and it left her infertile. But like the universe had corrected its course, we were aligned again. But Hannah and Simon were still living with his parents. So this is a different woman. Simon had a job at the Glaciers now. Eric had given him a full-time position after he left school. And then This is a different woman than the other one. The other one's Hannah. So this is the wife. This is the friend who was on the other side, whose parents died when she was a kid. And lived in the attic. Because people do that. You know, I say that, and there's a guy who just had, like, a giant, like, sex dungeon under his home that he built in Australia. So, you know... Weird shit happens in real life. I just don't believe it. Pointless. I don't see how it's hard. We've established I was in Glasgow when he was killed. We've spoken with the hospital. Doesn't tell us anything. Glasgow. I got in the car and I drove. I just kept driving north. Just kept going, just wanted to get as far away as I could. When I finally stopped, I was all the way up in Glasgow. I was so tired. I just had to sleep. 
I think part of the problem might be that they have to make sure that each of these clips has keywords in it. Maybe that's why it's so repetitive. I already know you drove up to Glasgow. We've already heard that like 90 times. Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. Is this Hannah? It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. Is Diane the other woman? That time. You must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. No. I don't think so. Glasgow was deserted that early in the morning. Okay. I don't know why you would be limited to the first five entries if you're uh, if you're searching a video database. That makes no sense to me. It's not it's on a porn website for Christ's sakes. Um What other search terms do we have set up? I'm basically going to go through most of these search terms, and then if I if I hit a wall, I'm just going to quit. I'm not that interested. But you can all watch me get pissed at this game. Mother Gothel. Nope. Blind. Hair. Here's one. What kind of hairs? Blonde hairs. Blonde hair. Really? What was that head shake? Anything you sing with you used as evidence against you? I don't I don't understand why you ever do that. Um, I looked up the song that she's singing. It's uh, apparently a uh, it's a traditional song, but it's it's had performances by the Grateful Dead. So we're gonna look up uh, Grateful Dead. I also get results for Jody Stetcher. Jody Stetcher. Nope. Let's look up a traditional. That does pull up stuff, but not what we need. Stuff we've already seen. Um, let's look up card. He has a wallet. A huge, silly thing. Leather. Real leather. A little bit of leather. Packs it full of stuff, business cards, receipts, lottery tickets. He always carries it in his back pocket. I think that's why he's got a bad back. He sets the discs. I haven't seen it, so he must have it on him. He always takes it out of his back pocket before then he comes in if he's in the house. 
We already have wallet written down. We don't need to write it down again. Dolls. Poison we already looked up. Attic. Twelve. And we can't attic. Doll. Attic. Stuck. Attic. Will it bring up new entries? It won't. There's 12 entries here. We need to come up with whatever we need to put next to Attic to get the next entries up. I say we just keep going. Let's go mushrooms. Thing was wrong. The bags. I, I mean, I think they were from our kitchen. You can probably check that. You know, we go into the cellar. It's just a place we put things we don't need. My dad used to grow mushrooms there. The, the bags were taped up. I think it was plastic tape. But I think it was ours. I think we need to look up bags. Then will the police let me back in the house? They let me take a bag of clothes with me, but... Clothes? Okay. I parked up in the street. It was busy, so I had to park down the end of the road. I walked up, knocked on the door, no answer. I took my keys out of my bag and unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. You can tell because the key doesn't turn when you try to turn it to the left. I walked in. Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes in the shoe rack. I shouted out. Um, I walked straight into the kitchen because he usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. But he wasn't there. I touched the kettle. It was cold. I looked quickly in the living room, nothing. So I walked upstairs to the bedroom and he wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. I had a shower. The phone rang whilst I was in the shower. I didn't answer it. I think it was Eric. Then I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, though I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. This time I spoke to him. Then I called Doug and Elena. I don't have that name. I decided to come and see you. That enough? I don't have Eleanor. <sighs> okay. Um, I parked up on the street. It was busy, so I parked down at the end of the road. I walked up to the house, I knocked on the door, no answer. I took my keys out of my bag, unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. I could tell because the key wouldn't turn when I tried to turn it to the left. I walked in, Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. Wait, what? I didn't see his shoes on the shoe rack. Um, I shouted out for him. I walked straight into the kitchen. He usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. He wasn't there. I touched the kettle, it was cold. Um, I looked quickly into the living room, nothing. I walked upstairs to the bedroom, he wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. And then I had a shower. Whilst I was in the shower, the phone rang. I think it was Eric, his boss. I didn't answer it. Then I came out and I was just exhausted. What? So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, but I didn't mean to. This is the I same story. Hours later, and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. I spoke to him. Then I called Simon's parents. And then I decided to come and see you. Okay, log the date 14 21 34 107 94. 30 06 94. So this is 107 94. 30.06.94. This happened a day before.
I can't tell if these are two different women or not. But if they're two different women, they both have the same story. Um, it's almost word for word the same. If it's the same woman, the story is still word for word the same. You can tell if a person is lying by if they can repeat the same story word for word. Um, a person who is lying has practiced you, you assume that they have practiced what they're saying to you and that's why the story doesn't change because a person telling the truth will not tell the same story most of the time word for word there there will be differences between the two stories there will be forgotten events there will be maybe additional events a liar will tell you the same story it'll be very very um, complete. It'll have like everything you did because you have every part of it memorized and you won't change the wording that much. So I either have two people who agreed on a story or I have the same person who's lying. Let's look up Dollhouse. So we can hear more about this stupid dollhouse. The legal stuff was completed very quickly. Handed me back in with Simon. Eric gave Simon the week off to help with the move. He decorated, modernized wallpaper curtains. Hannah insists the attic be left as it was, dollhouse and all. Simon never went up there. Again, I come to the idea that maybe I have two women with very similar stories. I, I'm going to be honest, I, I'm not even really sure it's, it's as connected as it's supposed to seem. No, it was shut. Most of the windows are really hard to open anyway. It's stifling in summer. They were painted over by my dad. Could have left a door open accidentally? Or there's a cat flap in the back door. I'm trying to explain how someone broke in. Let's look up. Have we not looked up Hannah? This is every mention of Hannah. There's 18 mentions of Hannah. My name is Hannah. H A N N A H. It's Pandre. No, what? It doesn't work for merit, it's not quite Yo, can can we talk about how how like people Sorry. find like a word that and means something and then they go, Oh my street. god, I have to bring that up. Hannah's a palindrome. It's it's also a common name. It, it, Hannah is not like a name that no one has. Hannah is a name that is very, very, very common. You don't even have to spell it for people. People know how to spell it. in the knock code. Ha! <laughs> okay. That's funny. Imagine if they're doing the not code to communicate with each other while they're both like being interrogated. Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. That's not Hannah Smith. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord, probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. What? The midwife, 
told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. What? She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. What? Diary. We need to look up Eve. Like right now, I'm not even going to bother looking at the other things. We need to look up Eve. Well, my friend Eve. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid. And she was always more popular with the boys. And I used to hate her for it. I mean, we really hate her sometimes. Yes. We'd fight. We walked on the beach once and I held Eve's head underwater. There was no one else around. It was at the far end of the beach. And I held her head under and I kept it out. Until she died. Because she's and dead. For a moment, I just wanted to kill her and watch her drown. Because you're Eve. You killed Hannah. But that was it. It was just a moment. We made up afterwards. It was a love-hate relationship. Um... She's Eve. She killed Hannah by holding her head underwater. And then assumed Hannah's name. That's my guess. Uh... They look very similar, is another thing. They are even two separate people. There are references to Hannah coming from the same character far later. A police station. Yeah, when I was young, we ran away on my birthday. Bob Dylan was playing in London and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. The taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd save money, pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. It's better than, it's better than what happens in SF. But... Do that now, you probably end up getting raped. My mother called me Eve. There we go. That's the special video showing that she's Eve and not Hannah. Oh, we got a little bit of this filled in. One volume missing. What's that mean? Um, not code. Can I get an explanation of that? Knock. Code. Uh, that's not code. Code. No, I can't get an explanation of the knock code. Hmm. Knights. Nights. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We'd sing for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holidays. Holiday. Hotel. Alone. I didn't. I slept in the car. I left about nine that night. And I wasn't there. You know, she might not have killed him. Even, even with all the other stuff, she still might not have killed him. Florence took me home with her. Mother hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. Okay. Eve and Hannah are twins. Florence apparently 
the the mom was like, I really only want one child, not two. Please take this other baby away from me. And then Florence is like, okay, I'll hide her in the attic. I live across the street from you. What the fuck is this story? Florence was a warm, kind person. But she was broken, I guess. When I found her diary, I also found a biscuit tin with other stuff in it. All the papers, letters, that kind of thing. Her story was in there. I never really spoke to her about it. I was far too young to really understand. I guess I just put it together later, once I was older. She had loved children, planned to have a large family, but her husband died in the war. Don't they all? And that was back when you What war? Life. She never felt like she could marry again. Isn't that strange? She was a widow from her twenties. But, I mean, I guess it was different then. You know, you married for life and she felt she could never marry again. I guess it was harder, a war widow. One of the dead. I'm, I don't know, maybe there was more to it than that. I don't really know. That wasn't badly written at all. No. It was just me and her. It was the name they were going to call their first child. They talked about it and were going to try when it came back. Florence's family had a history of first-born girls, so they were convinced it was going to be a girl. It's hard to know if this is all true. These are stories I remember that I read when I was a child. Maybe I misread. Maybe I misunderstood. Sometimes it's hard to remember what happened last week. Alright, so uh, I need to go pick up some stuff from my uh, from my other room. I'm going to leave you guys with the song really quick. Oh, it's a here's a new one for song. Let's figure out what this is. I guess you could call it that, but we were both, both happy to get married. It was a beautiful wedding. We had our first dance to come back and stay. I'm not sure if that's a good wedding song, but I loved it. I chose it. I mean, it was genuinely our first dance. We'd never danced together before. It was probably awful to watch, but I enjoyed it. It felt like it was just me and Simon for that moment. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try, just the two of us, you and I, oh, the two of us. We can make it if we try, just the two of us, you and I. Okay, so like I said, I gotta go uh, grab something from my washing machine, throw it in my dryer. So here's the song, I will be right back. Uh, I should be back before this finishes.
goes really with it, so I think that's a good place to stop. Okay, I'm back. That took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. Um... No. No, Simon didn't play guitar. He wasn't very musical. He liked to listen, but he was tone deaf. Yes. Yeah, it's my guitar. We should look up Princess Di, Princess Di, Diana. Yeah, we were 17. It was a nice wedding, people said. Simon looked very handsome in the photos. His parents paid for everything, but he's an only child, so it was important to them. It was what they called a shotgun wedding. But if you looked at the photos, you couldn't tell. The dress was beautiful. It looked like Princess Diana's. <laughs> the training wasn't quite as long, though. There's a great photo of the bridesmaid helping to carry it out of the car. What was it that they yeah. got? I wasn't really paying yeah. attention. Um... Helping to carry it out of the car. It's dress. It's her dress. Let's go dress. No. He was as shy as me. I asked... Well, I asked a friend to ask him out for me. We had our first date at the Odeon in North End. Odeon? We went to see Risky Business. Risky Business? I had on my one best dress. Simon paid. He bought me a whisper, and I was worried about getting chocolate on my teeth. Hannah was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous, didn't want to share. Even the first date, we went to see Tom Cruise at the old Odeon. We both went, kept changing places in the toilet. Yep, twins. We only had one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. Must have thought we had terrible bladder problems. The next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me. But that was it. We didn't want another card on our hands, and the Ouija board had said what? to hold back. After that, it was Hannah's turn, and she slept with him. Broke the rules. Deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep with him. <laughs> I mean, that's when she got pregnant. From that one time. She didn't have a miscarriage. She killed, uh, she killed Hannah. And then she wasn't pregnant anymore. I was gonna look up something and I forgot what it was, but it was in this video. Hannah. So what was it? Uh... Next day it was my turn. When yeah. him... Carl, that's right, Carl. I'm gonna look up Carl. <laughs> was he my first? No need to be so coy. <laughs> no, he wasn't my first. That would have been Carl. He was a local boy in the band. Oh. He was a bit of a shit. But he was sexy. We were 15. Yeah, lots of people sexy at the age of 15, aren't they? Family. So, Carl fucked off, and then there were other boys here and there, and then Simon. It was so significant. Differences? She's a better driver than me. She passed the test for us. I tried to take it and nearly crashed the car. <laughs> Learned that you can't rely on confidence to get you through everything. Mm, she is the shy one. 
She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked a boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. And she had such a crush. I let him take my virginity after the night that his band had played at. It got difficult. When I was with Carl, we would have sex, but Hannah couldn't. Couldn't let him see she was a virgin. She had lots of excuses. After a while, we decided that I should take Hannah's virginity. It's not that different to a bruise, putting a tooth, a graze. We used a hairbrush. After that, we took him in turns, though. I was always the one who seduced the boys. Until Simon. Oh my god. The hairbrush is the most, uh, overused version of that. It's either that or horseback riding. Horseback riding is the other one that you always get for why a, why a girl doesn't have a hymen. Most girls don't even have intact hymens by the time that they're, by the time that they're old enough. I don't understand. Yeah. I've been mad to Doug and Eleanor's and they're very worried. I feel sorry for them. Yeah. 1984. It was an awful year in the end. It's also a book. We were living at Doug and Eleanor's. I lost the baby at the end of spring and my parents died in the summer. It was a hot summer, a heat wave. So when they discovered the bodies, it was just awful. Because of the circumstances, them dying together like that, they brought in a lot of police. A forensic entomologist. I had to look that up. It was because of the heat. She kept saying heat over and over again. Um, let's look up Doug. Hoovering. Cigarettes. Vase. Nope. Oxford. Got a few for that. There was a conference, something to do with double glazing, in Oxford. This is like extreme Googling. Are you sure? What would you be doing in Oxford if there was no conference? I remember calling him. He said it was boring, he spent most of the time at the bar. Uh, I'm sure he did. Find a lot of women at the bar. Oh, you ever been to a bar lately? A lot less women than there used to be. A lot more dudes and wife beaters. Okay, you got me. I'll confess. We were there. It was a dirty weekend. Simon was going to expense it, pretend it was a business trip. I used a made-up name. We stayed at the hotel, had room service, didn't leave the room. Had a great view of the river, and you could hear the church bells. Like you said, we were very romantic. Church? Got another one here. Nothing else happened that night. We talked, then I said goodbye. Uh huh, then yeah. Next week I was singing the bar again, and there he was. You're a bar singer? And again the next week, he offered to buy me a meal. You don't sound like a bar singer. I told them I had already eaten, um, and so we got chips and ate on the beach instead. When we said goodbye, he asked me to kiss him. <laughs> Romantic.
Cat. Let's look up cat. Apparently, um, the numpad enter does not work. No, no cat. My parents had a cat before they died called Domino. We're going to look up Domino. It's this little black thing with white dots. We never did anything about the cat flap, but if you were thin, you could maybe squeeze through it. Domino. We loved our cat, Domino. Um, he had this little bell around his neck to stop him from killing birds in the garden. How? We used to write each other notes and put them in the bell, and we could send them to each other. I doubt it. Mum found some of the notes once, and she thought I was just writing to myself because our handwriting was identical. How? Um, we had our own words for things, so she didn't quite understand them anyway. You know, when you're a twin, your handwriting isn't identical. Not everything about you is identical. Some things are. But not everything is identical. Identity. Name. There we go. I would have been a good mother. I was young, but I would have been a good mother. We should look up mother. She was a girl, by the way. The baby. We should look up evil. We were going to call her Sarah. Sarah. Simon wanted to call her Ava after his nana. And Ava. But I didn't want her to have Sarah the same Ava. Sarah and Ava. It's Ava. Evil. Good. We'll look up those because those might have something. My name. That was the only question I think. <laughs> the lie detector works. Oh, look at that. It's not her name. We already discovered that. Yep. Um. Find it, his thing. Find it. Oh, I don't know why that works. Mother wanted me to grow my hair long, but I kept cutting it myself. I wanted to look like my reflection. She always had short hair when she was little. Mother would hide the scissors, but I would find a way. Cut it with a bread knife, something like that. My reflection would always leave her house and go on adventures, but I never could. Mother taught me at home, and I had books and TV. TV was magical, but it was only on when it wanted to be, so I spent a lot of time reading books. Okay, well, let's talk about um, what, what we know is happening in the story. A woman's husband dies. His name is Simon. She met him when, he was, when she was much younger. I believe at the age of 17 is the age that they give us here. They met at some like conference or something, and then uh, they walked outside. He, she was a bar singer singing in the bar and he convinced her to come out and have some fries with him or something and they went out and this is Hannah they went out and they ate some fries they had a great time and it was so great so romantic and then he she kissed him and she fell in love and eventually they got married because uh she had gotten uh Hannah had gotten pregnant with him and so she didn't want to share with Eve this husband, and she'd been pregnant, and Eve got pissed off, and eventually ends up strangling her and uh, strangling her and drowning her underwater at the ocean. Then assuming the identity of her sister and marrying Simon. They had a miscarriage because she has never had um, a baby. She was never pregnant in the first place, so they assumed merely that she had had a miscarriage and that the baby had been lost. Then, eventually, it seems like he started hanging out with this one girl at, the, at this bar who was blonde, and he really likes blondes, and she maybe became jealous and then murdered him. I think that's the story. She may have murdered her parents as well. There's some other stuff about how they have been switching places um, throughout most of their life just for the fun of it because one was very good at flirting with men and the other one wasn't, and they basically just shared boyfriends. 
let's continue going through the search terms I already have logged and see where we end up. When beautiful people died, we always felt like it was a sign. You remember Princess Grace? Grace Kelly? She died in a car crash the year before we met Simon. We used a Ouija board to speak to her, and that gave us the power. We should look up Ouija board. That's what we thought then. That people who died tragically leave some kind of magic behind. We used to share dreams. We used to wake up and write them down in our diaries immediately and compare them. Ouija. We should look up that guy's name too. When beautiful people. Uh, Princess, so Grace Kelly. Grace Kelly. We'll add that to the session. Um, let's look up his thing. His thing. Got one out of that. Simon was very moral about that sort of thing. He wouldn't just walk out there and sleep with anyone. Mm -hmm. He wasn't that kind of guy. He took his marriage very seriously. What? Simon didn't. Simon didn't just sleep with everybody. Wait, why did that come up with something? Oh, because I tagged it. Carl. Family. There's one. Yeah, when I was at school. I worked part-time in the front shop. It was sort of an extended family thing. My dad used to work there, my mom worked there before I was born. Uh, I took care of paperwork, filing, typing out invoices, that kind of thing. It was a good job for a girl back then. I didn't work a till or anything, I was quite shy, so I wouldn't have liked to have worked a till. She says till twice, we're going to write it down. Um, it's like a body. A lot for body. The bruise. I have a really fast metabolism, so stuff like that just comes and goes. Oh, okay. I don't know if there's much more that I can tell you that I haven't already told the other policemen. I found the body. Look at bruise. I... Bruise. I have a fast metabolism, so I bruise easily. His body. It didn't look real. And his throat. It looked like his throat had been cut. Thank you. I've been trying to figure out how this guy had died, like, the whole game. Glasses. 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 We haven't heard about the glasses yet. It doesn't always work. Glasses and throat. Can you imagine? I tried. I tried to get pregnant too, but it didn't happen. I slept with so many boys, men. My body refused. I think my period stopped because hers had. I was pretty, but I mean, how could we stay the same now? I felt like Hannah had really fucked things up. Set us down separate paths. We had become different. She wasn't her reflection anymore. Ill. There's one. Well. She has a knife. Uh, um, she's been cooking. I guess. She's been cooking him his favorite meal. Um, she's his wife. And he's asleep and she doesn't want to wake him. Because he's ill. That's why she's sad. Because he's ill and he might die. 
I have a sad story so much rather. Knife. I think it's a good thing to add. Okay, moving on. I had another thing I wanted to look up here, and I can't remember what it was. Uh, we already looked up bags. We'll look up cellar. We have two for cellar. Well, fine. Considering. There's nothing in the cup. I got back into the house today. That was weird. Knowing your people have been there through my things. It's like I've been burgled. I mean, worse, obviously. I don't know. I haven't lived in the cellar yet. They sent a cleaner in. As good as new, he said. But they had to throw some stuff out. Couldn't get the blood out. And I'm still waiting to hear from the coroner so we can get a date set for the funeral. It's going to be a cremation. So. You can tell there's nothing in the cup because when she's uh, when she's wiping the spoon through it, um, you can hear it scratching against the bottom of the cup. There's nothing in the stupid cup. I I don't think there was anything in there that I I guess funeral and cremation. Those were two. Those would be two things I would look up. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes. They're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I, we had an alibi and we wanted the body to be found later. We wanted to have suspicion on us so we could then disprove it, rather than have it linger. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch, that was my touch, to make sure the alibi stuck. Again, there's not two of them, there's one of them. Oh, you know what, alibi. I have a thingy. How's it going down there? You done? Pretty much. Why can't I? Uh, no. Yes. Good, so you think you understand why your mother did what? Oh, okay. No. That's understandable, Sarah. You can always come back again. I'll be outside. Log off and meet me over the road things up. So if I log off, we'll just turn the game off. Oh, okay. Well, um, so to summarize this game, I think it's okay. I like the idea. I don't like the writing. I think the writing is silly. I think the interface is silly. Um, the reflection in the mirror in the computer screen was obviously a man. At least it looked like that to me. Um, it, the whole story is told between very boring segments that have no reason for being there. Um, the writing is very overwrought. It's full of weird um, references to, to things that have been used so often in fiction that they've lost any original meaning that those symbols were supposed to represent. Um, I didn't get the chance to look up reflection or anything, but again, let's talk about the story. The story is girl was born. Two girls were born. The mother only wanted one child. She gave the other, she gave the other one to the midwife. The midwife raised them both, had uh, raised one of them, hit her in the attic. They could see each other. They're like, oh, we kind of look similar. The one who could see the the one with the happy family was like, oh, uh, she's so great. She's my twin. She's like my reflection. And then she goes crazy. They begin switching places and blah, 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 trying to, uh, I don't know, live their life. Uh, she, the, the woman, thinks for some reason that her mom is uh, this 
or uh, that her sister and her are like supposed to be trying to be one person. That's what their goal is because they're twins. Um, the other one meets this guy that she falls in love with, gets pregnant. The other one feels betrayed for that, so she ends up murdering her and then assuming her identity and marrying her husband. Um, I assume that he cheats on her um, and might probably get someone else pregnant. I think that's where that went. We never really got that line. I assume that's what happened. He cheated on her and he got someone else pregnant. And so she murdered him by cutting his throat and then hiding the body. That's it though. Um, I'm not going to get every clip. I don't find this game that interesting, but um, maybe you do. Maybe you liked it. Even with my bitching, maybe you liked it. Um, I'm sorry that I spent this whole time complaining. I understand how frustrating that can get, but I was going to play it and I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think about it. So uh, I hope everybody uh, has had fun. Please have a better day than, than this game probably made you feel like you should have. Um, and don't worry. Cause just remember that at the end of the day, none of this ever happened because it's a video game.